I have the underside of the tail pretty much done now. What I've done is I've thinned the edges to the halfway mark on the blank, leaving this area where the undertail coverts are. Now I can go ahead and round those undertail coverts, maybe using the number 7 gouge. What I want to do is have them pretty much at the same level as the tail on the edges and be uh, pretty much the same, the original thickness at uh, that center line. So all I'm doing is taking off that edge. When I've done that, next job is going to be the top of the tail. Top of the tail is pretty easy, but you have to be a little bit careful about it. What we want to do is we want to round from the center line, which is going to stay right there, down to this edge down here, but not right to the edge. We want to stay, oh, probably a good sixteenth of an inch or so away from that edge. So what we're going to do is take our knives and work down from that center line down to close to but not too, too close to that edge. Notice that I'm going now in this direction. I'm going with the arrow going down. That's the only way you can do it without breaking off pieces of your tail. So, And what I wanted to do at this point was to make those transitions very gradual between one feather grouping and the other. How I did that was to place my knife at the far end and work my way in, depending on the way the grain is going, uh, so that I left the wood at the same height at the tip of each of the wing groups, but I wanted it to go into so that it appeared to be underneath the group in front of it. So on each one of these feather groupings I left it about the same height at the tip of the feather grouping, but I went into the other feather grouping. That makes these look like the topmost over these, which is over these, which is over these last ones. Okay, this um, is exaggerated. Okay, the way that we do it at this point is exaggerated. They're not going to be anywhere near that differentiated when we're done but we're nowhere near done yet. Here you can see a little bit of the difference between uh, before and after. The uh, feathers that allow the light to come through have been undercut and the wood is much thinner at that point. Where it hasn't been undercut it's still quite solid. That's what you should aim for so that um, your feathers are getting thinner, especially at the end. When you're talking about in the middle now, of course it's still quite thick, but Mm, that isn't uh, something that we really can deal with. If we made them as thin as they should be, they would be prone to breaking. So we leave them a little bit thick in the middle, but we give the illusion by making the feathers thinner on the edges that it's a very thin tail. So our tail looks pretty good now. This one got a little bit uh, mm, too much off one side. I'm not sure how that happens. The wood just kind of uh, collapsed on me. We'll see if we can fix that up when we get into the wood burning, but for right now it's going to be good enough. You can see the tail emerging between the upper and lower tail coverts, and that's all good. All right, now you don't need to be too, uh, too very careful. As a matter of fact, I want you to be specifically uncareful. When you're making these uh, little strokes, as I'm doing here, I'm using just the tip of my skew. I'm making the strokes irregular. I'm leaving some air space between them. If I put too many strokes too close together, all I have is brown. And I don't want brown. What I want is brown with areas of white between. Then when I paint it, you see, it's going to have a certain texture and it's going to look like there's feathers. High spots on feathers, low spots on feathers. So how I do that is I just keep the tip moving. Right, left, right, left. Um, just go in irregular areas 
and then fill in the area maybe that looks too light. Just put another stroke in there. Okay. Burning for reality in animals is in some ways pretty difficult because you have to have a certain irregular patterning. You want to avoid a pattern that looks like fish scales or anything like that, but it still has to have kind of a, a homogenous quality to it. So I've done a, a few of my lumps and bumps. I've got this one with feathers going this way. This one feathers going that way, this one kind of going both ways, and uh, that original down down there. Now, I've uh, indicated just some lines here, which I recommend that you do these lines so that you don't end up, you know, with crossed feathers and such. If you put some guidelines and you say, okay, this one's going to go there, this one's going to go there, then you just have to fill in, and you can focus more on making them darker at the top and lighter at the bottom, and. I left some of them kind of hollow so that you can see the direction, the size, and the orientation of all of those feathers. Before I turn off my wood burner, I will run some lines through those white areas. Not really dark, but just really light ones so that there will be that texture in there. We don't want smooth uh, basswood anywhere on our bird because there's no place on this bird that is smooth except the beak. And I'm going to take out just a smidgen and that smidgen is going to be plenty to do both eyes. It's probably the size of two BBs because you need just about a BB size for each eye. And take half of it. I'm going to put my BB in the hole, and it pretty much fills my hole up completely. Push it down. Now my hands are really tacky from mixing up that epoxy, so I just need to put my finger down on the round part of the eyeball, then automatically the flat part is going to go in first, which is what I want. I'm going to press it in with my thumb, and then take out with my toothpick, all of that excess that's squished out of the hole. Now as you're working, you'll find that your uh, eye is going to get very hazy looking. Don't worry about that. You can wait until quite a bit later before you clean it up and it's going to clean up fine. So I want to squish it in so that it's pretty much level with the surrounding wood. The eye protrudes just a small amount. Every time I squish it in, I'm going to get more ooze out, and that's fine. And your epoxy is still good. You can put a little bit around the edges to further reinforce the strength of the legs and also to make a more gentle transition between the uh, pewter leg, legs where they enter the body and, and the wood burning. If you do that, be sure to texture it just as you did around the eyes so that it blends right in with the wood burning. So that If you've got paint thick on your brush, it's probably not the right thing. So What I do is I paint everything the color that I want it to be at the end except thinner and more muted. That way I'll know where to put my next layers of paint but I won't have built up a heavy layer of paint. I don't want to mess up all this nice wood burning that I've done. I want to have it still look like a wood carving when I'm done. So in order to do that I have to keep the paint thin and I have to keep the colors that I want where I'm going to want them at the very end. Uh, I always add a little bit less than you think of a color until you get the right amount. It's, it's a discovery process. It's does this look good or does that look good? Do I need more of this or more of that? 
And when you've got it the way you think it's just about right, then you can go ahead and thin it down. Meanwhile, I, I might have enough here to do the whole bird, and I might not. If I don't, I'll just mix up some more. And if it's not exactly perfect, that's still okay. It's going to look just fine. So now I'm adding some of my clean water to make the wash that I want. Cleaning off my brush. I'm kind of wringing my brush. That helps to uh, avoid getting any lumps of heavy paint. Now I've, I've got the uh, face done and I've uh, looked at it carefully to make sure that it's balanced when you're looking at it from the front. On uh, some of the areas I noticed that I had kind of overlapped too much on one side, but that's okay. What I did is I went ahead and did it again on the other side so that they matched. I'll correct them later, but I want the corrections to be the same on both sides. What I want to do is with the tip of my fine brush, I want to stroke along the lines of those eye streaks. I do not want to cover it completely. If I cover it completely, then I won't have the effect of that underpainting underneath. So I have left some areas showing through that underpainting. I have too much paint on my brush, so I'm going to squeegee it off here. I don't want globs of paint. I can't stroke finely if I have globs of paint on there. Okay, I've done half of the bird with the uh, straight burnt sienna. I've come over the head, down the back, uh, up the tail. You can possibly see it best on the tail where I've brought up the redness in the brown areas of the bird. And it's uh, fairly subtle. In some areas you can't see it very much. Think of it again as a place keeper so that when we come back with our blacks and our whites we'll know what not to put in those areas because it's brown. Uh, one thing I wanted to tell you again another hint about painting is if you start to get too polka dotty, too patterned on any parts of your bird you can just take the tip of your brush and just squiggle it through your paint or with a little bit of paint on your brush, not too much um, just to kind of break up those areas while still leaving it uh, patterned the way you want it. So here's what it looked like before and here's what it looks like after. He's starting to get quite a bit of nice color in him. And I'm going to touch just the tips of those feathers and then drag it towards me. This should put just a little bit of color on the tips of the feathers, but I want to make sure that I'm going to let the rest of the color show. I didn't put all those layers on for nothing. I don't want them to disappear. Bright, sunny yellow color. I did that with yellow ochre and white. Quite a bit of white, a little bit less of the uh, yellow ochre. And I've got something that's a nice creamy, butterly, buttery uh, yellow. I want to stroke this along only the top parts of the groupings of feathers as they go up the bird. You might need to run a few small ones down inside the crack if it looks like it's going to be too dark. 